I mean, let's let's be honest. Being president of the United States is not exactly a blue collar job. All of the people who have been president in modern times have at least ended up being very well off. But Mitt Romney is a different breed of cat. Mitt Romney's reported net worth is more than the last more than the last eight presidents combined. <laughs> Now, his wealth is nothing bad. It's not a morally good thing or a morally bad thing about Mitt Romney. It's just a fact about him. But it is a strategic conundrum for the Romney campaign. How to keep the candidate relatable, how to create the sense among voters that he might have some idea what the average American's life is like, despite his vast and lifelong wealth. I mean, they're not going to change who Mr. Romney is, but given his own mega wealth, how he talks about the issue of wealth and who has money and who doesn't is a really important and sensitive subject for that campaign. I'm not concerned about the very poor. Rick, I'll, I'll tell you what. <laughs> 10000 bucks. $10,000 bet. I'm not in the betting business, oh, but I'll, okay. I'll okay. show you. I drive a Mustang and a, uh, and a Chevy pickup truck. Ann drives a, a couple of Cadillacs, actually. I like being able to fire people who provide services to me. Mr. Romney actually said in an interview today that he regrets saying that last one. He regrets saying, I'd like to be able to fire people. And, and yeah, you could see why he might regret that. But, but if he is trying to appeal to voters who aren't rich like him, who are maybe even on the lower end of the economic spectrum, Mr. Romney has to worry not just about what he says, but what he does and what he would do in terms of policy. This man who would be the wealthiest president in modern American history by a mile, his economic plan would raise taxes on poor people on purpose. It would single them out on purpose. Quote, on average, households making less than $20,000 would see their taxes increase by more than 60%. People making more than a million dollars would get tax cuts, averaging 15%. That's Mitt Romney's tax plan, and it's on purpose. It is not an unintended consequence. I think it's a real problem when, when you have half of Americans that are almost half of Americans that are not paying uh, paying income tax. That's the real problem. The problem Mitt Romney is trying to fix when it comes to poor people in America is that they have too much money and the government should take some of their money away. It's a real problem. This is the thing in Republican politics right now. I mean, it sounds crazy, right? The problem with poor people is they have too much money, so government has to fix that by taking some money away from the poorest people in the country. It sounds crazy. But this is a thing right now among Republicans. I think it's abysmal that the bottom 51 percent do not pay income taxes. Republicans are supposedly uniformly anti-tax, except they're not anymore, and it's not getting much debate, but Republicans are pro-raising taxes now on people who have the least money. They're not just ignoring them, they're overtly going after them and raising their taxes on purpose. Democrats haven't even really bothered to rebut this, because I'm not sure that Democrats are broadly aware that this is happening. But almost everywhere that Republicans have control right now and can set policy, they're not just talking this way, they are acting on this. Earlier this year, Republicans in South Carolina introduced what they called their tax reform bill. It would raise taxes on the poorest families in South Carolina and cut taxes for people who are well off because, you know, poor people have it too easy. After the Republican takeover in Wisconsin, Republican Governor Scott Walker introduced a budget to cut taxes for everybody in the state except for poor people. Scott Walker's budget would raise taxes on the poorest people in Wisconsin. This week in the great state of Kansas, that state's Republican Governor Sam Brownback signed a bill into law that cuts taxes for the richest people in the state and raises taxes on poor people. This is amazing. I mean, the Republican Party has this anti-tax reputation, but they are only pursuing that agenda for rich people. You would think that they might just be ignoring people, ignoring poor people, but they're not ignoring the poor. They are actively seeking out ways to make poor people more poor using the tax code. Joining us now is Ezra Klein, columnist for The Washington Post and Bloomberg News and an MSNBC policy analyst. Ezra, it's great to see you. Thanks for being here. Good evening. I wanted to talk to you about this, Ezra, because I feel like I need a, I need a wonk check. Um, is there some cogent quantitative economic philosophy that says this reverse Robin Hood approach makes sense for the economy? No, there's a philosophical one. Um, mm. So the Republican argument here is that if you don't have poor people paying income taxes, if they're not bought in, they will want to vote themselves larger and larger shares of government spending because they won't be paying for it, right? They'll, they'll see government benefits as free, and as such, they'll go to the polls and they'll say, we want more Medicare, more Medicaid, more food stamps. It's a sort of a, a political economy viewpoint. 
But I think it's important to say it isn't true. Um, when they keep saying income taxes, right? Romney says income taxes. Orrin Hatch, who you played a clip from, says income taxes. Most poor people, most middle class people, the main taxes they pay are payroll taxes. The taxes that go to fund Social Security and Medicare. And beyond that, to speak of Kansas, they pay state and local taxes, which tend to be quite regressive. Uh, when Brownback was looking to pay for his bill, he wanted to raise his state sales tax and also take away an income tax deduction for the poor in his state. So poor people and middle class folks do pay large amounts of taxes. It just, the income tax is the one primarily progressive tax we have in this nation. So when you only focus in on it, you have taken out the taxes that poor people pay. All of these Republican legislators, um, not everybody, but just about everybody, it's a rounding error to consider who hasn't sworn a blood oath to Grover Norquist, that he or she will never raise taxes on anyone at any time for any reason while they hold public office. Is there an asterisk? in the no tax pledge that says actually it's cool if you're raising taxes on poor people? I mean, why isn't, why isn't Grover Norquist and all the anti-tax purists out there calling for these Republicans' heads for raising taxes? Because they're not that pure. Although I should say, for in Grover Norquist's defense, he tends to be quite consistent. He doesn't necessarily go to the ramparts of this kind of thing, but he will say it's not good if you let the payroll tax cut expire. Uh, what Romney is uh, attempting to do here, which is let some of these stimulus provisions that help out poor people, uh, he'll say it's not good if you let that expire. That is, in fact, a, a tax increase. So he is fairly consistent here. It's um, gen more generally Republicans who, when they talk about uh, what they want to do on taxes, what they really want to do, the way they really see the economy is they want to lower taxes on richer folks, the folks they think of as the job creators under the theory that that's going to unlock some dramatic amount of economic potential in the economy. It's important to say there's frankly no economic evidence that that actually happens. And more to the point, we ran a very large experiment on this in the 2000s when the Bush tax cuts came into effect, which, by the way, are part of the reason that uh, poor people don't pay that as many income taxes. It did not work. We did not have a wonderful economic decade of economic growth, but that hasn't done anything to uh, undermine this theory in Republicans circles. It is, it is amazing. I mean, the th what you are just describing there in terms of their philosophy toward rich people, I feel like at least we're having a debate about that. What mm -hmm. they are trying to do to poor people, I feel like Democrats are in denial that it's even possible that Republicans would consider it, and so we're not yet debating it. But here on the Friday before Memorial Day, we will launch the <laughs> national discussion, you and I, Ezra. It's uh, never going to be the same. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Brace yourself, America. Uh, Ezra, have a great weekend, man. Thanks for being with us tonight. And I really you. Appreciate Thank you, it. Rachel. All right. Uh,